Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back and it is time to break down Monday's DFS slate. We got an eight game slate. We're going to fly through this. I know it's late. I want to get this out for you guys and have you be able to watch it before the slate locks. So we're going to fly through this bad boy and uh, hit on the high points and uh, move through games pretty quickly if there's not anybody that I like. And uh, we will hop into this. This is the best I'm going to be able to do on Mondays and Wednesdays if I even get videos up because of how my schedule at school works. Uh, so my college schedule is just not um, very conducive to making videos early because I got to be up there at uh, 8 and it's an hour drive. So I got to be up at like 6 in order to get up there and then I don't get home until about right now. So let's get into this. Starting with Milwaukee. No real interest. There you go. There we go. First first team out of the way. Moving on to Indiana. No real interest here. Uh, Victor Oladipo. GPP, but other than that, no real interest. Toronto. No real interest here. Maybe a DeLone Wright has been playing very well. Um, I'm going to ignore this game against Chicago, where he put up 61.25, but he's been playing really well for that salary tag. Over the last little while, I don't even, I don't even know how he got to 61. How did he? So we got 10. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. I see how he got to 61, but that's just, it's just crazy that the lone right was able to put up 65. But he's about the only guy I have interest on here, just because he's relatively cheap. Um, other than that, no real interest. On the Brooklyn side, we have Damari Carroll out tonight. Uh, so you could look at Alan Crabb or Joe Harris, maybe a Quincy AC. Other than that, no real interest on Brooklyn. Moving on to Houston. We still have James Harden out. Uh, Houston's kind of fallen way down my list. Earlier in the day, I loved Chris Paul, Eric Gordon, and Gerald Green, and Clint Capella. And I still think they're all viable, but not as good of plays as they were earlier in the day with value now opened up. For Chicago, I like Chris Dunn, I like Justin Holliday, uh, but the real person you want to play here is Bobby Portis, Grant, Bobby Portis, granted Nikola Miritich is out, uh, he missed shoot around and he's doubtful to play, I'm going to assume he doesn't play, hopefully we get this news, we got this weird, stupid Milwaukee, Indiana and Toronto, Brooklyn game that tip off at 7 and 7.30, the rest tip off at 8 or 10 or 10.30, so this is a weird slate, time wise, uh, but other than... Like, I don't want to play Laurie Markinen at 5,900, even with Miritich out. I just, I, I understand he's got 40-point upside if he with, with the minutes, but that game, he's not scoring 32 again. Let's let's be real. It's probably not happening. Um, the 40-point upside, like a double-double with 20 points, is about what you're hoping for if you want him to really exceed value. I think Bobby Portis can do that, and he's 1,500 less. Moving on to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kevin Love Revenge is about it. LeBron's posted DraftKings points against Jimmy Butler. There's one above Steve and the rest are 50. It's like 50, 52, 53, uh, 46, and a 62. None of which are going to get it done for you tonight probably. So I'm just going to avoid LeBron. Uh, it's Kevin Love if you want to. Moving on to the Minnesota Trim Timberwolves. My favorite play of the night is Jimmy Butler. 8,400 against LeBron. I'm not sure if LeBron will guard Butler or Wiggins. I mean, they have been playing Wiggins at the small forward opposed to Butler. So, I don't know. I'm assuming LeBron will guard Butler, but I don't think it's like this given that he guards Butler. LeBron hasn't been... Um, and it's not like LeBron has been taking guys out of the game this year. It's not like he's been like some lockdown... Uh, Kawhi Leonard type defense on people this year so I'm not really worried Jimmy Butler 8400 I mean we've got one two we've got three of his last like 12 games three of them how many okay hold on oh, let me do this two four six eight ten three of his last ten have been not hitting value, and they weren't like one of them. This, I wouldn't be upset with a 39.25. And a 36.5, you know, that would hurt. Like, it obviously is not a helpful, it's not helpful to the cause, but it wouldn't kill you, and neither would this 29. Like, in order for them to even stay relevant, and I'm going to ignore the Boston game, because Boston is a good defensive team. 
Um, this one against Milwaukee. Probably got Chris Middleton defense. Not anything. The Denver one is kind of the inexcusable one where he had a bad game against Denver. But he didn't get any assists or rebounds, which has kind of been his thing. Is getting a lot of rebounds recently. So I am going to be playing Jimmy Butler tonight, most likely. Uh, I really like Tyus Jones as well, but there's a lot of value, so I'm not sure you have to go there. And I like Cat, but I'm not sure you have to go there as well. So we're halfway through the games. Like I said, this is going to be really quick. Andre Drummond is probable if he somehow gets ruled out. Eric Moreland if he starts. Boban if he starts, but I really would rather have Moreland start and play him. Other than that, no real interest on Detroit. On the New Orleans side, if Drummond is in, I like Boogie and Cousins. I like Bo I like Boogie and Brow, uh, I like Davis and Cousins. Um, if he's out, the game probably gets blown out, so I probably don't have any interest. But if he's in, I like Davis Cousins, but I probably won't have either of them in my lineup tonight. Moving on to San Antonio, so we got a lot of news here. We've got Danny Green out, Manu Ginobili out, Kawhi Leonard out, Danny Green out, Rudy Gay's still out. <laughs> So we have all of those guys out. It looks like Bryn Forbes and Kyle Anderson will start again. And it's a back-to-back. -back. So we don't even have a guarantee that Aldridge and Powell play, uh, as well as Tony Parker. Like, there are a lot of guys that they could sit on this back-to-back. -back. It's Pop. You know, he likes to sit. I might just avoid the situation altogether. My lean is with Forbes and Anderson, but I also don't think you need them tonight because of the value that's opened up. Moving on to the Sacramento Kings. Zach Randolph is questionable, leaning towards more probable to play tonight. George Hill and Frank Mason are both out. Hill for personal, Mason with his injury. De'Aaron Fox is 4,900. Put up 32 um, without George Hill in the last game. I don't know what I want to do with De'Aaron Fox. It's kind of dicey. Um... I want to play him, but he's kind of in, like, no man's land for price. He kind of restricts my lineup that I have currently with his price of 4900 If he was, like, 44 he would fit my lineup perfectly. But at the price of 4900 he's kind of, I don't know, hurting it. Garrett Temple, a little bit interesting, but he hasn't been playing the point guard like he was earlier, so that hurts him. Buddy Heald, um... Interesting play, but probably not worth the risk. Uh, he's either going to get you 40 value or nothing. Those are only the two options. 40, like directly at value or nothing. Moving on to the two games. These are the two most important games. I breezed through the last six. They took eight minutes. These will two will probably take it. Eight minutes. So starting with Denver. Probably them and the Hawks are the least interesting. I really just have interest in Trey Lyles, who's still underpriced. I mean, look at his box score. 31. 42, 32, 31, 40, 28, 26, 25, 18, 29. There is only one score in there where you would have been like, man, I really wish Trey Lyles would have had a better game. And he only played 24 minutes in that game. So imagine him with three or four extra minutes. He probably gets there for you, which is what he's been playing in a pace up matchup here against Golden State. Golden State averages, I believe, 116 points per game or 100 it's 112, I think. 112 or 100 it's over 110. And the uh, Nuggets average 106. Uh it is the one of it's a big pace bump for the Nuggets. Uh I just love Trey Lyles tonight. I think he gets it done. He gets you around 20 points, gets you some nice rebounds. Um I like him and I like the Joker. Probably don't play the Joker, because I'd have to play him over, like, Jimmy Butler, and I'm not playing him over Jimmy Butler. Um, I just can't live with a Jokic that takes 10 shots, or 13 shots, or 6. Like, I, I, I want him to take 21, or at least get me 16 shots. Like, take some shots, jo Jokic. Or he's going to need to get fouled, like he did in this game, in order to score 22 actual points. <laughs> Take away those turnovers, he scores 40. So, uh, he's not turning the ball over 10 times every game. Um, so, I really like him, but I probably don't play him. It's kind of one of those weird scenarios. So, moving on to Golden State. My favorite plays of the day, Draymond Green and Stephen Curry. They have been ruled in. Durant is out. So, I'm going back to the well of the Draymond Green. I played the Saturday only slate, or the Saturday early slate um, a couple days ago. 
and uh, I just stacked the Warriors and the Clippers, and that went extremely well to me for me. And I think I'm stacking the Warriors and the Clippers again tonight. Um, so we've got we've got Draymond at 8K. With Durant out, he sees a usage bump for assists and rebounds. Without Durant, they kind of let him do. These are the three games without Durant: Dallas, Houston, and the Clippers. You can see double-digit rebounds in every game. Close to it, he would have gotten his triple double in this game had he played his full allotment of minutes, but he didn't see the fourth quarter, so he capped at 36, which is nice because it didn't cause his price to get raised an enormous amount. Um, I'm assuming more closer to the 9 points than the 17, but if he finishes off this double, this triple-double, maybe gets 2 more rebounds, 3 more assists, um, and uh, 4 more points, you're looking at like 12 or 13, or you, you're looking at like 15 more points, you're looking at like a 51 from him in that game. He also, he, he's been shooting it, I would say you can expect about 10 shot attempts in this game. Uh, I expect this game to stay close without Durant. And so I'm going to load up on Draymond. I mean, sometimes with, with Durant in, you can see his rebounds are kind of sporadic. Um, they can be really low, but they can also get to the double-double. So I really like Draymond tonight. Definitely my lock of the night at 8K. I love Curry. 10-5 high price. I don't think people play it. Pay it. Pay it. He put up 66, 45 real-life points in 30 minutes of action. He should be good to go. Well-rested. Should play his full 37, 38 minutes tonight. Um, you can see in the games without Durant, 19 shots, 20 shots, 21 shots. He's shooting 50%, which I don't think is sustainable, but he is, he's not going, I don't know. I don't want to say it's not sustainable, but I, I probably more, I'm looking for like a 40% shooting night and 40% from three, something like that. Um, not 16 free throws either, but I, I'm hoping for like 30 something, 34 Closer to the medium amount of assists and medium amount of rebounds, uh, like a 36 and six type of night um, with a steal. Um, I don't even know if that gets me there to where I want to go, but 36 and six is what I'm hoping for, and it's a nice it's a nice matchup against the uh, against the Nuggets. Not probably the highest ceiling, but I think he, Curry has an extremely safe floor. It's Clay Thompson bobblehead night if you want to go there. I don't know if I can play clay he's been doing a lot more in the rebound and the assist categories with durant out um i just don't know i'm i don't uh, man he's a good play but i just don't know if i can i hate playing clay thompson dude if he does this and then doesn't get his peripherals like if he has like one of these games you're just like dead in the water on the slate tonight and i don't know like a 32 isn't gonna kill you like a 24 I don't know. I just, I like him, but I don't know if I want to, I don't want, I don't know if I want to risk being dead in the water because Clay didn't sh make his shot. Moving on to Atlanta. There's a couple of plays here that I like. Uh, not a whole lot though. Uh, I like John Collins and Ursan Eliasova. I also like Dennis Schroeder, but I don't think any of them enter cash game consideration. They're all GPPs. And then finally, we've got the Los Angeles Clippers. This is all bait. I don't think we're going to get Milo's Tia Dosic news. That's the issue. He's questionable. I'm hoping he sits. I would assume he'll sit. But there's not like any guarantee that, oh, Milo's Tia Dosic is going to sit. If he sits, I love Lou Will. I like Lou Williams whether he sits or not, but I love Lou Williams if he sits. And then I like Jawan Evans and Tyrone Wallace if he sits. But. If I don't get news on if he's sitting or not, I probably can't play those guys. So Blake Griffin is out with his concussion. Or yeah, he's out. I th I'm pretty sure he's out. I'm pretty sure Blake Griffin is out. I'm like 90% sure. He might still be listed as questionable, but I think he's out. So Montrez Harrell, 4,300, and DeAndre Jordan, 7,800, become favorite plays of mine. Um, Harrell, when given minutes... 32 minutes, put up 27 and a half points. 22 minutes, 37 and a half. 16 is kind of an outlier. Uh, I can't see far enough down. There was another game, you, I could see it on my phone. Uh, he played like 33 minutes and he put up like 40. So, um, Montrez Harrell, one of my favorite plays. 
Granted, Blake is out. I'm pretty sure Blake is out. Like, I'm 90% sure Blake is out. Um, but, guys, that's going to do it. Ran through these quick. Hopefully, they'll be up by 5.30. Give you an hour and a half before lock. Hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace out.